Cape Cod Book Scene, a half hour show about the literary life of Cape Cod. I'm your host, Melanie Lowers, books editor at the Cape Cod Times. My guests, multiple guests this morning, have all been involved in a project to create a book and a variety of other works around it. And they are, from my left, Kate Conway, who is the author of a new YA novel called Undertow. And next to her is Krista Mullaly. Next to her is Colby McWilliams. And to my left is Leslie McKinnon, all seniors at Barnstable High School. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. No Let's start with talking about where did Undertow come from? Um, Undertow initially wasn't supposed to be a teen's book. It was supposed to be about my grandfather's time as a teenager in World War II. And I couldn't quite get a grasp on his story because I've never been a Marine. He was an Iwo Jima survivor. But when he would talk about his time in the war, yes, there was violence and there was great sacrifice, but there was these hysterical stories of what these teenagers did on this island, you know, between like catching a goat here and there and naming it. And they were just ridiculous, but it was set to a backdrop of war. And I wanted to try to bring that to the teenagers of the Cape in a different light. And then I also used to sit and watch the kids jump from the Town Neck Bridge. And so that kind of, I started thinking about what if something was in the water that would grab them that wasn't a shark. And so from there, I just kind of let my mind go insane and the whole story developed. Okay, so how long, what's the time frame here from the beginning of the project to, to oh. completion? Um, I started writing the story when my son was one. Uh, he's five now. And I never intended to finish it, except some readers started reading scenes. And they were like, you got to finish the book. So actually developing these characters took almost a year just developing who they were going to be. And then we started writing the story. And this is your debut novel. This is it is, it is your first published work. Mm -hmm. OK, great. So now you're, you're talking about these people sitting here as characters. I do. <laughs> All right, so what do we mean by that? Well, um, I really wanted a cast of characters that I could connect the faces to. And when I was developing the story and figuring out the characters, I used to grab models from like the internet, anybody. It could even be just a hair model. In fact, I think your character was initially a hair model. <laughs> so I had folders of each character, entire histories of each character, even though they would never appear in the novel. For me as a writer, I needed to know the details of all these people. Um, once the novel was set, I really wanted local kids to be the cover. And I wanted kids from Barnstable High School, which stars in the book. And um, one of my team readers lived in Ketuit. And she knew what the main character looked like. This Isla Walker had dark hair, big dark eyes. She was the girl next door. <laughs> and she said, hey, I think my neighbor might be this main character. And I started stalking you on Facebook. <laughs> I'm sorry. And I contacted Leslie's mom. And I said, hey, I'm this maniac writer. And can I put your daughter on the cover of a book? And she's like, sure. So from <laughs> Leslie's, she your mother just sold you out. So then from Leslie's Facebook page, I looked up Barnstable High School. And I was going through picture after picture. I'm like, I'm never going to find this, this main character who's supposed to be this immortal boy that's a so killer. So you're trying to place a face mm -hmm. I was trying to a character that's only been in your mind. Right. OK. And it's and is already written in the book. You know, I didn't do it in reverse. I had to match real people to what I already wrote. So. Uh, I was going through all the photos, and there was a couple of boys, but then I saw his picture. <laughs> and I'm like, I got to get this kid wherever the heck he is. He's perfect. And the funny thing is, I was dragging and dropping photos of the kids to my team of readers and shipping them around the country. So you guys didn't know that. But they were like, yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the kid. And because I had a team of about six readers around the country. And they kept rereading the book over and over. They were phenomenal. And um, then I stumbled on your photo, not realizing you two were best friends. <laughs> and I can get her to work. Her hair is too long, but her face is perfect. And then John Sullivan from Quahog Corner right. knew a couple other people. I could not seem to find um, the boy who's supposed to be, play Kean and um, the boy that's supposed to play MJ. And it turns out he knew them. So he brought them in. And I remember walking in the studio. And I took one look at them, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's, that's literally my character standing there. And they were brilliant. They, everybody hit their mark the second I flung them on the stage. And they were just flying by the seat of their pants. But what, the results were incredible. Now, you're talking about the stage. So what, what was the purpose of, other than, I mean, you've written a novel. What was the next piece that you needed 
faces and a stage. And I, I just want to mention uh, for our viewers that John Sullivan was a former uh, director of the theater pro you know, projects yep. at Barnesville High School for something like more than 25 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Koha Corners is a cartoon series he's mm -hmm. actually working on out of the community media center yep. where we are sitting yeah. right now. Yep. So, okay, so the well, stage project. Well, John uh, knew that I was trying to find faces and I needed a space to shoot on a green screen, which turned out he was here with Kohog Corner, and he's like, I could get you into the space, and I have a young kid that could be your photographer, Alex Duanis, did a phenomenal job. Poor son, soul, like, shot for six hours straight. And um, he said, I can bring in some extra people that I think might fit. So I was telling him who I was looking for. I needed a tall, Kennedy-like kid that could pass as like a California surfer. And then I needed a more shaggy version of that <laughs> that was long and lanky. He's like, I know these kids. So he brought them in. And the purpose was to brand the book like a film. Okay. Most novels that go to film, you have a set cover that's right. usually a graphic. And then you find the actors. Then it goes to film. And then it goes back to the cover. And suddenly, the faces of the actors are what you see when you read the book. I was like, why, why just not brand it from the get-go? And if I had 9,000 photos, I could make different, I could make character cards, which they all have. Um, I could make different covers. I could make blog headers. They became real people. Wow. So That's an ambitious marketing plan. It was a crazy marketing plan. <laughs> but it seems to have worked very well because we have teenagers that are competing in giveaways like 3,000 people at a time just to get their hands on a poster to hang in their room. So in my daughter's room there's Colby's picture, next, <laughs> there's his picture next to um, oh, the boy from the Hunger Games, the blonde one. PETA. PETA. <laughs> you and PETA are hanging in their room. But um, I loved the idea of being able to build something for the teenagers of Cape Cod. There was a wild ride in a story that they knew the characters and they had a say in the story. So how did you uh, how did you approach this at first? What was your initial response when you were hearing about this person who was sold by your mother? Who um, I happen to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, at first I had seriously no idea what to think. I was like, well, I'll just go with it, you know. <laughs> it was just like I mean, some random person, no offense. But no, I wasn't <laughs> random person. I was like, okay, and I um she kind of mentioned Colby to me, and I was like, oh, like, I'll talk to him about it, try to get him involved. So I didn't feel like I was, like, alone, like, just going into some random thing. Like, I had people I knew, and mm -hmm. obviously she knew my neighbor, who I'm, like, pretty close with as mm -hmm. friends, so it was okay. Now, how far back was this that you guys came into the project? Um, April? Yeah, probably yeah. April. Okay, so it's been a pretty rapid year. ramp up. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Yes. For all three of you. It's been a quick slide to fame for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you feel? I mean, do you feel like there's some fame involved? Yeah. Oh, yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I mean, at school, like, our pictures are all in the library and, <laughs> you know, you know, you hear about the book selling at like bookstores um, in Sandwich. I yeah, think you said Helms keeps tickets, selling yeah. out, and Eight Cousins is selling out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and Barnes and Noble now is going to have an event related to them, which is insane because they would like these guys to come and sign as their characters. Wow, this mm -hmm. <laughs> this is kind of insane, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's been it's been a fun ride. Though. Did you know you were signing on for this? Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, and we, you we signed the photo release. We're like, sure. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So how, so you, all three of you are graduating seniors, so this is something that you're doing other on the side of applications and essays and SATs and all of that mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. How much time have you put into it so far, would you say? Mm -hmm. uh, I Just the big shoot yeah. itself, pretty much. Mm -hmm. That was like a solid six hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that was a long yeah. time. Um, I think now that the book only released October 12th, I believe. Okay, yeah, no, I know. I got the first wind of it on Facebook yeah. in August, and I kept <laughs> kept sending you messages going, You're like, where's the book? Where's Why the don't I have the book? <laughs> I need the book. I need to have this book, because people are talking about it, and I'm like, I don't have the book. Wait, I need the book. <laughs> I know. I, finally, I get the book, and I go, okay, well, it was just released. So, yeah. so I knew there was a lot of advanced buzz going on here. I mean, mostly yeah. it's, it's the book comes to me first, and then, and then the buzz, you know, yeah. we, we painstakingly try to build the buzz, but the buzz was already in, in place with this. So. Um, that was a deliberate attempt to, to build the fan base before the book ever released. So um, we had an initial run without these guys on the cover that 
of books that were sent out all over the country to people that requested them. Not, not my family, but I would post it on random sites and be like, who wants the book? And they would take them because they were bloggers. And then they would hand the book off to somebody else with a letter inside it that says, this is an art copy. You're obligated to give an honest review on Goodreads. So by the time the book launched, it had like 80 reviews already sitting on Goodreads. And from there, having these fabulous guys as, as faces, people were like, I, I got to see what the heck is going on with the story and why are these random kids on the cover and what the heck real is... Real kids. Yeah, real kids. Real kids, not, 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 not professionals. Right, but, and not you know, something I stole yeah. off, you know, like the internet. You could download anybody, any right. character off the internet and just That's slap right. them up. But I needed a set of people that could go with the arc of the story because it's a series. So I couldn't just grab any random person. Um, Can anybody hear Harry Potter? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, uh, I mean, really. I mean, look at you know where those characters went and how much we identified those characters over yeah. the years with, with the same actors. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, it, still, they yeah. will always be identified, I think, that way. And I think whenever you, even when you read like The Hunger Games, which I actually haven't read, read yet, you will always see those faces of those characters in that yeah. book. So to me it made sense to, to give the teens here real characters that they might even know face to face and put them on, on the cover. Why use anyone else when they were so fabulous yeah. anyway? What did you guys think of the book? Um, I really liked it. I read it before the shoot actually because I wanted to have like some background so I knew like what I was supposed to kind of be portraying <laughs> and everything. Um, it's interesting. It's very relatable actually, even though there's a lot of like sci-fi-ish like immortal people. Um, like the characters are very real. Like I identify with um, my character a lot. So. And your character is uh, Isla. Isla. Yes. Okay. And um, she, I mean, she's just kind of this girl. She moves to Cape Cod and she like inherits this like mansion she's like I don't know why I have this and like <laughs> all this stuff and um, I mean she goes to school and she encounters like the mean girl she meets this hot guy like you know and then her story kind of evolves into like her real background like what is she kind of thing so it's interesting and what about you um, I thought it was really interesting it was I thought it was an easy read and um, it's not really my type of book but I definitely enjoyed it reading it what is your type of book? Um, oh, my favorite book is Fight Club. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. So, okay. little, uh, <laughs> not, not quite in the same arena. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. <clears throat> but you think, it, I mean, and what about you, Krista? Let's just finish off the question. Oh, no, I love the book. I love my character the best. I mean, I'm a little biased, but <laughs> she, um, she's very strong-willed and very, you know. Outspoken. <laughs> yeah, she's just like, I don't know, doing her own thing, and I love that. I like to be like that too, you know. That's um, interesting. That I mean, I think that's, yeah. I can't even think how rare that is. <laughs> I mean, and it, when when I would read when I was a kid, of course, I might imagine myself in a story or whatever, mm -hmm. or be attracted to a character, but I would never imagine myself as the character. <laughs> that's a that's a very unusual turn, I think. I think um, taking almost a year to develop characters, and like I said, they built their whole their whole backgrounds and who they were, and it. I literally didn't write, I just did that for a year. And even though all those details will probably never appear in a book, they're in my head so I understand. So I could drop Colby's character into The Hobbit and know exactly what the heck he would say. And you know, and Anna is a blast to write, well, Krista's character, <laughs> Anna is a blast to write for. I was doing that at the oh photo gosh, shoot at one point. I'm sure. But um, <laughs> she's so much fun to write for because I just try to have her be this outlandish blonde that. I think we called her a, a pixie that could bench press a, bon a bronco because she <laughs> yeah. just had that attitude that <laughs> yeah. she could really take on anything. And Isla's great because she doesn't tolerate, you know, any pain in the butt kids at school. And Colby's character I like because he's more of a mystery to mm -hmm. the beginning until you realize what he is. And a lot of the debate with the next book between the fans and stuff is I was planning on writing it from both their perspectives, so two first persons. Um, there's a lot of strong feelings both ways because some people are like, it's Isla's story, you can't mess with it. But then on the other hand, I know where I'm going with his story uh -huh. and how dark I'll drive his character. Um, so it's fun. How, what is the arc now? How many books do you there's, foresee? There's a, it's a, 
The main novels are a trilogy that involve these two guys. Okay. And then Krista's character and Justin Blaze, who, who plays the boy that's with her, um, they have a novella that's supposed to take place the summer before this one called Cruel Summer. Okay. And then the woman in the beginning that's supposed to be Isla's um, grandmother who dies in the very beginning of the book, her story and Christian Rains, who's Jeremy Peacock, <laughs> we shot him too. Um, their book is going to be a full-size novel known as Rebel, and that's going to take place in the 1800s and show you her life from the time she's five until she dies when she's 20. Wow. So this is... That was planned from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I you were in a writing group, right? I mean, you, yes. you're not, you know, you, you didn't just decide to write a book. You've uh, been... Well, that part I kind of did. <laughs> well, yeah, but you've been writing for a while. Yes, right? I've been a With journalist for almost 15 years. Okay. And um, I'm on the board for the Cape Cod Writers' Center. Uh, I'm in the Society for Professional Children's Authors, um, things like that. And I am part of the Fiction Fanatics group, so that's a bunch of people. That's, that's the word I was thinking of, the Fiction Fanatics. Yep. Yeah. Those are all writers. Some of them are published. Um, and uh, they write all different stuff from steampunk to a bunch of different things. It's, it's really fun. So I, I guess in my mind is um, if, you, if you've been so immersed in writing for so long, and I, I, you've written for me mm -hmm. for many years and, f and for the, uh, all the feature editors at the Cape Cod Times, um, why why was it so long before you had your first book? Uh, kids. Okay. <laughs> That's a fair question. Um, I've done a fair lot answer. of stuff in my lifetime, and I tend to juggle a lot of things at once. So it's a time-consuming um, pursuit to write a novel, especially since we chopped almost 30,000 words out of Undertow. It was a much bigger novel. Um, doing that was extremely painful. <laughs> But um, it was the right thing for the book. Mm -hmm. And the agents that I talked to loved the sweep of the book. And it got offered. But they wanted me to change things that I was unwilling to change. And then they would have taken the cover away from me. And I knew what I, I, knew what I could do with the right kids. Mm -hmm. And I keep calling them my cast. Even, mm -hmm. though, <laughs> even though they're my faces, I call them my cast. Well, I think that makes, I make, I think that makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. And it extends the possibilities outwards, oh, heck of course, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, oh, go ahead. Well, how long did it take each of you? How much time have you put into this? I mean, since your faces are up on the walls at school um, and, and about to be, I guess you were saying, at Barnes & Noble and, mm -hmm. and Hyannis, um, so, since you're associated with that, how much time you know, has it taken you to, to do this? And how, how has the school responded, I guess, to it, too? Um, I've had a couple people recognize, like, us from the cover. I've had like teachers be like, oh, aren't you on that book that's hanging up? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> actually. Um, I mean, as for the time, I'm not really sure. I don't know, what would you guys say? After we did the shoot, we just kind of followed it. I mean, she would tag us on all of her Facebook updates. We'd be like, oh, she sold out of that store, and now she's mm -hmm. doing that, and these people are trying to interview her and all these things. So we've been like following it. This is like kind of the second big thing we've all done since mm -hmm. the oh, shoot. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, because it is the yeah. middle of the school yeah. day, and you're and here. We, I mean, yeah. we all got mailed the books as well. So <laughs> that kind of made it real <laughs> He's like, yeah, you could do it any time. Well, yeah, I mean, how, how pleasant is it to leave the building in the middle of the day? Right? Uh, yeah. I think that. you know, And I'm assuming then you've had buy-in. From, from the school, too. I mean, yes, the, the school is, um, what happened was the school wasn't aware of what I was doing at first, <laughs> especially since it's set in the halls of Barnstable. Um, <laughs> but then the librarian got wind of it, and um, she asked me to bring in posters and things, so I did that. And then um, I brought in the original print file. You have one that's of the cover of the book. When a, when a publisher runs a print file, they run the flat of the cover. And I gave one to the principal who was a student when I was a student there. So um, That's always helpful. And then I got a tour of the school. I don't know how you navigate. I needed the GPS. Oh my god. I know. Um, because I needed a real feel for the school because I was going to have a major scene in the next book in the school. Um, so in that respect it was great. And then B2TV said we'd We'll do the book trailer. So there. And that's the that's the Barnesville High School television their, station. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's their television station. So Jim Gilbert there, he had me come in with a couple of copies of the books, all your character cards. He wanted to know what scenes they could shoot. 
So I told them that's their baby and let the kids dictate what they want to do with that. And I just marked some scenes for them I thought could work for them. <laughs> So you have you acted out any of these things either? Or you? Not, yet. Not, yet. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. So so far you are sort of disembodied heads. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> say that. Not, I mean I don't mean anything negative about no, that either. No. But, yeah. but I, I think it it, it uh, obviously makes sense that the next step would be to create mm -hmm. scenes and act them out mm -hmm. on film. Um, I, they're going to be here again in December too, shooting. So they'll be reshot again um, with a slightly larger crew probably. Um, the great thing is they know the characters and the story now, and uh, they'll get wind of what's going to go on in the second story and who's not going to make it. Are you writing like the that. script? Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, I don't Those do things. the script. This is just for the second book that okay. should be out in June. Okay, uh, so that's quick. Uh, yeah, that's the hope, because the wow. goal was the first book is set this time of year on the Cape. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, second book will be in the winter. I, I wrote off-season, which was kind of a risk for the story, but I liked off-season on Cape Cod. Well, and I, yeah, I think, I think you're right about that. The vast majority of books I get that are written either about Cape Cod or, um, or written by Cape Codders, you know, with a setting on the Cape, it's either summer or, or if it's a murder mystery, the depths of winter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's either festivals going on and visitors and a dead body behind the, you know, yep, the yep. festival tent. Yep. Or, uh, you know, it's the dead of winter and there's a body floating through the ice flows off, yep. you know, off Sandy Neck. Yep. Um, yeah, the, that, the, that off season, that spring and fall, I don't think people know us, no. uh, you know, or identify us with those seasons that much. Um, yeah, I get that. I was going to ask you too. We were talking before we started taping that um, that I said, well, this is a YA novel or a young adult novel, and you said, yeah, upper level. It is upper. So, what would you? How would you pinpoint that? Um, YA is so wide anymore. It is. It's, it's like, huge. It's like a what, eleven or twelve to twenty-five. Right. Something in there at twenty-two. Um, right. Um, it, it's funny because some agents have called it a new adult, which is more of the college age and up. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically for the the 14 year old through 100 because a lot of my readers are my age, um, which might be kind of creepy because they all like you guys. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, so that was the case with the Harry Potter series too. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, she started out with the assumption that it was a, a, a novel for young people, and their parents uh, fall in love with it, and they yeah. ended up a lot of times. What I heard, they were reading it together. Yeah. You know? That and kind of thing. It's it's fun because it, it does walk a fine line because um, when I'm looking through Goodreads, sometimes I'll read the reviews that are coming through from bloggers and some will like pull a picture off of a movie and they'll tag it. And I, I remember once one for Justin, the woman must have been in her 40s, but she had him going, you, Kean, that weighs my bed. And I was laughing so hard <laughs> that I tagged it to him. And he's like, that's kind of creepy. <laughs> but they are falling for the character that he he's the face for. And, you guys have huge fan bases that oh, yeah. I get stuff for. I have people ask me, can I ask the character a question? I'm like, uh, go ahead. <laughs> like, wow. So that for me is so much fun to see them be able to portray something that sat in my head forever. That must be a very strange feeling to yeah. have people ask you stuff like that. <laughs> I think when they start signing at the book signings and they realize yeah. exactly how many people are looking at them and reading them, it's going to be a little bit strange, especially when they go, can I take my picture with you? So, oh, my God. oh, yes. That hasn't happened yet? <laughs> no, because oh, they yeah. haven't done the book signings yet. Yeah, oh, but it's going to. Them. Oh, my goodness, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a different thing altogether. Mm -hmm. But you're, and you're, you feel ready for this. It's exciting, I think. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask you this at a later date. Is it still working for you, <laughs> Leslie? This was the worst idea ever done. <laughs> well, I mean, on the cover, um, and I, you know, I hope we, we can show the cover at some point. I mean, this this is Leslie <laughs> on the cover with, um, and that's not you, right? Yeah, that's that me. is. That is you. Oh, okay. Yeah. That you a look dark. a little older there. Yeah. Uh, the way you're turned, yeah. but. Um, you know, that's a very, um, how do I want to put this? <laughs> it's a significant emotion that's coming off the it page. Is, it, and, it is. Um, um, in some ways, it's a little bit Romeo and, and Juliet. One of the taglines yeah. we had for it was what would happen if Romeo and Juliet survived. Because their families are basically like the Montagues and the Capulets, which Shakespeare never tells you why they hate each other. That's right. So this was, a, I thought, that drove me crazy, one. And number two, I would, could, could really convey that deep-seated hatred between two rival enemies, but what if their kids didn't quite get it? Mm -hmm. um, 
And the next book gives you a lot of details of what exactly Elizabeth had done in her time that will convey to these guys. So I, I know she. D you don't put a subtitle on the cover, mm -mm. so there's so, sort of no, like grab you, you know, explanation about essentially mm -mm. what the book is about. Yeah, just the back has um, kind of a voice from Isla. The entire book is written in first person, with the exception of the prologue that's in third. Um, and it's a death scene. Um, and that's the piece here that says, my plan seemed pretty darn solid. Uncover the truth, curb the body count. I love that phrase. Stop kissing the killer, try not to die. Talk about an epic fall. Yeah. I mean, that's, that does, that's a grabber. Yeah. It really I, is. And that's basically her voice, too. Um, it was great fun writing from her. I kind of grabbed everybody I ever went to high school with and all the things they've ever said and started building her character. Um, the decision to not put a, blo uh, a piece on the back, a teaser on the back, I followed in um, uh, kind of the shoes of Sarah Mass, who wrote Throne of Glass, mm -hmm. which is a brilliant dark YA about a young girl who was an assassin in a glass castle. And she did the same thing. She just did taglines on the back. And then when you open Undertow, there's actually the teaser inside the book. I think it's on the second page. That was a risk, but it seems to have paid off <laughs> so far. But um, it was one of those things I didn't think I could sum up the book very well. And you're confident this is moving nationally and yep, it's been requested by multiple national libraries now, so it's being shipped out all over the country, which is really crazy because they are asking for your posters and your <laughs> cards as well. So, with every shipment goes all their character cards because each character had their own card and their own phrase built on um, Leslie's character's voice. So you guys sort of, this has legs. Mm -hmm. And I mean, <laughs> even fun. though you're all planning on, I mean, you'll all be doing something different next fall, right? You'll all be wherever you are, but mm -hmm. you, do you plan to sort of continue with this? Yeah. Is yeah. it all possible? So I'll come back, yeah. mm -hmm. What did you say, oh, yeah. Krista? I said, we'll all come back, because I mean, some of the other characters are in college now, but they're all coming back in December to take pictures again, so yeah. that's we'll incredible. be doing the same thing. We'll yeah. try to shoot as many as possible so that, uh, like poor Justin, he cut his hair and I was like, <laughs> he had long hair in the first shoot. He's like, I'll grow it out. Yeah. <laughs> but we're going to try to shoot as much as possible. That. Like, don't change. Yeah. But um, we'll shoot as many as possible so that they, w they can do whatever the heck they want afterwards. Um, but uh, it's been a wild ride. I liked the story, but I wrote the story. So right. to have, I had an offer to come and sign books in North Carolina. They said, if you're, when your tour starts, I'm like, what tour? <laughs> <laughs> so I got invited recently to tour next summer with um, some authors from Tor and Forge and Macmillan. Wow. So I well, will do excellent. New England. Now, whether or not they say, can you grab the characters? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know, yeah, but yeah. Um, that was really phenomenal. And I was like, yeah, I'll come. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, we're out of time. I, I, I told you guys this would go fast. <laughs> yeah. um, I want to thank you again for all taking time out to be here. Uh, I really appreciate it. I know you're really busy, but this is a, uh, you know, an amazing story. And I think probably watching this, other authors are going to be motiva motivated by what you've done, Kate, and other people watching are going to be motivated by what you guys have mm -hmm. done and the roles that you've taken on, which I think is pretty fascinating. But I think it's perfect for where we are in terms of contemporary lit. Oh, yeah. Um, and I want to thank all of you for joining us this morning. And and join me again for the next Cape Cod book scene.